Hey folks, in this video we're going to study an important form of duality for matrices and a very interesting matrix product that can be defined using it, called the intersection product. This video is a sequel to my prior video on the box product. If you're a weird person, you might even say this video is dual to that video. So if you haven't seen that one, you may want to watch it before continuing, although we'll review key definitions that we need here. First, we recall some basic notation. We write n with square brackets for the set of integers from 1 to n, and just call it n. We write nk for the set of subsets of n of size k. nk has size n choose k, that is, the number of ways to choose k elements from n elements. Each set mu in nk, being a set of integers, is ordered naturally. The set nk itself is ordered lexically, like a dictionary. To determine the relative ordering of two sets in nk, we start by comparing their first elements. The set with the smallest first element comes first. If the first elements are equal, then we compare the second elements to see which comes first, and so on. Finally, mu bar denotes the complement of mu in n, which lives in n n minus k, and is of course also ordered naturally. Now let a be an n by n matrix. As before, to keep things simple, we assume the entries of a come from a field of characteristic zero, like the real or complex numbers. For sets mu and nu in nk, the determinant of the k by k submatrix of A, with rows indexed by the numbers in mu and columns indexed by the numbers in nu, is called a minor of A of order k, denoted with vertical bars like this. I read this as det A mu nu. Note that every kth order minor of A is of this form for some mu and nu in nk. As an example, we compute a second order minor of a 3 by 3 matrix. Be sure to pause the video and make sure you understand this example. The kth compound power of A is the n choose k by n choose k matrix A to the k, consisting of the kth order minors of A. For mu and nu in nk, the mu nu entry of A to the k is the minor det A mu nu. We recall our notational choices here. First, we're putting angle brackets around the exponent k in the compound power to distinguish it from an ordinary matrix power. Second, we're using the elements of nk themselves to index the entries of the power, which is natural because the entries of the power are minors. Third, we're using parentheses with subscript and superscript to denote an entry of a matrix, while we're using vertical bars with subscript and superscript to denote a minor of a matrix. By convention, the zeroth compound power of A is the one by one matrix consisting of the single element one. This makes for nice matrix algebra. To study compound powers more deeply, we'd like to work with all of the powers of A together in one space. However, in general, we can't add or multiply different powers because they have different sizes, n choose k by n choose k. In searching for a solution to this problem, we recall from the binomial formula that 2 to the n, which is just 1 plus 1 to the n, is the sum of n choose 0 through n choose n. This suggests that we can combine all of the compound powers of A into a single 2 to the n by 2 to the n matrix, and leads us to a definition. The compound matrix of A is the 2 to the n by 2 to the n block diagonal matrix A star, with the compound powers of A down the main diagonal. It's convenient to count the positions of the blocks on the diagonal starting at 0 instead of 1, so that A to the k is in position k. Here's what the compound of a 2 by 2 matrix looks like, for example. We can already put this definition to good use in a general statement of the cauchy binet theorem, which shows that the star operation plays well with matrix multiplication. By contrast, it doesn't play well with matrix addition or scalar multiplication because it's not a linear operation. Continuing with the compound theme, we can informally identify the kth compound power of A with the 2 to the n by 2 to the n block diagonal matrix seen here, where the zero matrix in position P has size n choose P by n choose P. Again, for convenience, we're counting block positions starting at 0 instead of 1. As an example, we can informally identify the 2 by 2 matrix seen on the left here with the 4 by 4 matrix on the right. Under this identification, we have that the compound matrix of A is just the sum of the compound powers of A, and the product of any two compound powers can be computed. All of the powers here are being viewed as 2 to the n by 2 to the n matrices. So we can make some sense of addition and multiplication of compound powers if we follow this convention. However, there's one problem. It's possible for some n by n matrices A and B that A to the k equals B to the n minus k, 
where k is not equal to n minus k, since n choose k is always equal to n choose n minus k. For example, if we take both a and b equal to the n by n identity matrix i, then both the kth and n minus kth powers are equal to the n choose k by n choose k identity matrix. It's not clear how we should represent such matrices under our convention. More generally, given an arbitrary n choose k by n choose k matrix M, not necessarily a compound power, should we identify it with the block diagonal matrix on the left, where M is in position k, or with the one on the right, where M is in position n minus k? In fact, we can do both. DNKF denotes the set of 2 to the n by 2 to the n block diagonal matrices of the form seen here, where M is an arbitrary n choose k by n choose k matrix in position k, with entries in the field F, and the zero matrix in position P has size n choose P by n choose P. We simply write DNK if the field F is understood, or DK if n is also understood. Informally, we can consider the matrix M to be in DK, and also to be in DN minus K. We think of the elements of DK as n choose K by n choose K matrices in position K along a diagonal, and the elements of DN minus K as those same matrices but in position n minus k along the diagonal. This perspective turns out to be very useful in studying a form of duality for matrices, as we'll see. To start, again let A be an n by n matrix. Recall that the classical adjoint of A, denoted by adj A, is the transpose of the cofactor matrix of A, where cofactors are signed complementary minors of order n minus 1 in A. We have a fundamental theorem relating the adjoint and the determinant, which is essentially equivalent to Laplace's cofactor expansion formula for the determinant along a single row or column, as well as to Kramer's rule. Now, the minors of A of order n minus 1 are just the entries of the n minus first compound power of A, so there's a relationship between this power and the adjoint. We can write the relationship like this. Here mu and nu are in n n minus 1, so their complements in n1 are just singleton sets, essentially just numbers from 1 to n, which we use to index the entries of the adjoint. Notice that nu bar indexes rows in the adjoint, while nu indexes columns in the compound power. Similarly, mu bar indexes columns in the adjoint, while mu indexes rows in the power. In the sign factor, mu plus nu denotes the sum of the elements in mu and nu. It's worth pausing the video to check that this formula really works with a few small matrices. There are three important things going on in this formula. Complementation of the indices, transposition, and multiplication by a sign factor. Additionally, if we think of A as being in D1, then we know it's natural to think of A to the n minus 1 as being in Dn minus 1, and by this formula it's natural to think of the adjoint of A as being back in D1. All of this motivates a general definition. The kth Poincaré dual map dk from dnk to dnn minus k is given by this formula. Here we're treating both m and dkm as n choose k by n choose k matrices. Notice that this dual operation involves complementation, transposition, and multiplication by sign factors, just like with the adjoint operation. It's easy to see that dk is linear, and that dn minus k is its inverse. So each dk is a linear isomorphism. You might be wondering why this map is called the Poincaré dual map. I'm borrowing that name most directly from mixed exterior algebra, where this map is a generalization of the Hodge dual or Hodge star map. However, a similar type of duality goes by this name in the theory of manifolds. As an example, for a matrix A, the adjoint of A is just the dual of the n minus first compound power of A, and vice versa, which shouldn't be super surprising since this example motivated the definition of the dual map. We can combine all of the dual maps into a single map. First, we define dnf to be the direct sum of dn0f through dnnf. We simply write dn if f is understood, or d if n is also understood. Then the Poincaré dual map d on dn is defined to be the direct sum of the dual maps d0 through dn. This map has a number of nice properties. For starters, it's linear, since it's a direct sum of linear maps. It's also an involution, that is, it's its own inverse, since the kth and n minus kth dual maps are inverses for all k. It reverses matrix products as a result of the transposition involved in the definition of the dual maps, and it preserves the trace and determinant of matrices. We obtain a number of important classical results using this map. 
For instance, we get this generalization of the relationship between the classical adjoint and the determinant. It's perhaps a little alien looking, but this result is equivalent to the generalized Laplace cofactor expansion formula for the determinant along any number of rows or columns. As an example, taking A equal to the 2 by 2 matrix seen here, the second equation in this theorem reads like this. Be sure to pause the video to confirm that you fully understand this example. It makes use of all of the definitions we've presented thus far. The dual map can also be used to express Jacobi's identities for the minors of the adjoint as a duality relationship between compound powers. Taking k equal to n and n minus 1 in this theorem yields the determinant of the adjoint and the adjoint of the adjoint, things that every schoolboy wonders about. In a prior video, we studied the box product of matrices. If we think of the matrices A1 through AK as being in D1, then it's natural to think of their box product as being in DK. This is consistent with the fact that the box product of k copies of a matrix A is, up to factorial, just the kth compound power of A, which we think of as being in dk if we think of A as being in d1. Importantly, it's possible to extend the box product operation to all of d, and it remains a symmetric or commutative operation. The general definition is a little complicated, though, so we won't write it down. Composing the box product operation with the dual operation is fruitful. For example, the mixed adjoint of matrices is just the dual of their box product. For more information on the mixed adjoint, see my other video on it. If we take all of the matrices equal, this theorem just says that the classical adjoint is the dual of the n 1st compound power, which we already know. We can also define another interesting matrix product, which is even less widely known than the box product. The intersection product of matrices in D is the dual of the box product of their duals and is denoted here by the intersection symbol. The kth intersection power of a matrix in D is 1 over k factorial times the intersection of k copies of itself. Note we put parentheses around the exponent k in the intersection power to distinguish it from the compound power and the ordinary matrix power. My thinking here was that the parentheses kind of look like little intersection symbols, turned sideways and flattened a little bit. I was running out of symbols, so work with me, people. It follows immediately from this definition, and the fact that the dual map is an involution, that the dual of an intersection product is the box product of the duals. And also, the dual of a box product is the intersection product of the duals. So the dual map is an isomorphism between the box and intersection algebras in D. In other words, the intersection and box product are dual operations. In particular, intersection powers and compound powers are dual to each other. We close this video with a beautiful theorem. This formula describes the intersection product of two compound powers of a matrix. Taking duals on both sides, we obtain an equivalent formula describing the box product of two intersection powers. As a special case, the intersection product of A with its n minus first compound power is essentially just the determinant. This is very reminiscent of the fundamental theorem relating the classical adjoint and the determinant, which led us down this path to begin with. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here are the references I used while making it. Thanks for watching.